Do you or your partner close up, become deflective or defensive or stonewall when one of you is sharing their pain or criticism or constructive feedback? Well, if you're doing that, you're not letting it land and that is hurting your relationship. And today I'm going to tell you how to let it land. My name is Dr. Asel Romanelli and this is The Potential State and today we're in Own Your Shit 23. Let it land so you can fly higher in your relationship. So the concept of let it land comes from the world of theater improvisation, where when two people are improvising on stage, the advice is to see it land and let it land. See it land means when I'm saying something, when I'm giving an offer or a bid on stage, I'm doing just one piece and I'm letting, I'm seeing it land. I'm not overloading my fellow actor with a lot of information. And as the receiver slash listener, I'm letting it land. I'm letting whatever they say into me to affect me on stage. And from there, I'm going to react. In psychotherapy, the Gottmans who have been researching couples for 20 years, they separate the masters of relationship from the disasters of relationship by their ability to accept influence. Accepting influence is the ability of partners have to let what their partners are saying into inside. Accepting their influence, letting that change them. And why does that separate the masters from the disasters? Because if I'm Accepting influence over time, I'm encouraging my partner to bid more, to, get, to bring more emotional bids, to share more, to open up more, to go deeper. And you can refer here to the episode on emotional bids. So letting it land or accepting influence is one of the key skills for any good improviser and any good partner. So why should you do it? But before we say why should you do it, why shouldn't you do it? What's the price you're going to pay if you start letting things land, especially the negative things? that your partner has to offer. First of all, it's going to burn. And if you really let it in, you're going to feel all those little moments where you disappointed them, hurt them, belittled them, ignored them, all the places that you're not perfect, and that's going to burn. You're going to feel a mixture of sadness, regret, shame, pain, humiliation, incompetence, being small, feeling guilty. You might even leak into trauma mind. So all those things are they're very, very hard emotions to feel, and nobody really wants to feel them. Yet, what's the gain? What's the secondary gain of letting things land? First of all, you will feel a vitality. You will be touched. The ex existential loneliness will be a little bit softened when, when you're going to let people in. They're going to touch your heart and your soul. And we, even with all that pain, you will grow because you are going to be, you're going to be accepting influence. And all those blind spots that you don't, can't see about yourself, you're going to see them. And that's going, to be able, that's going to enable you to own your shit and to grow and to be more collaborative. And you'll be more surprised from your relationships because people are going to be touching you and stretching you and challenging you. So you're going to grow and you're going to co-create and you're going to be collaborative and you're going to feel alive. And you're going to be raising the bar in your relationships for honesty, for directness, for boldness. And that is a huge gain, in my opinion, from letting it land. And how does that look in real life? So first of all, in the clinic, every single day I help couples lower reactivity. How? I just tell them to stop. They're about to say something and just say stop. Let it land. I want to connect this to the idea of focusing. The idea in focusing is I'm, let, I'm just connecting to my body and I'm looking for that felt sense. How does that land in my body? Where does it land and what feelings are coming up for me? So I actually slow down couples and I allow them to just let the last statement of my partner, just let it land, let it trickle down into my body, how does that feel? Not to automatically shoot or get defensive. What I call the holy trinity of blocking, being surprised, insulted, or disappointed. So instead of that, just open up and let it land. And on a personal note with my wife, Galit, so when we were in therapy and she shared something very ugly that I did to her, in front of the therapist, I felt so humiliated and so embarrassed and I just wanted to either shoot back at her, just get up and run, but I told myself, no, let it land, and I took a deep breath and I, opened up and I let that in and it was burning but I felt it was such an important moment or even yesterday where I spoke to her in a not respectful way in front of the kids and she called me on it and I was about to shoot back and like go defensive but I just opened it up and I let her and I let her I let the kids see that their dad did something wrong spoke to their mom in an inappropriate way and I let it open and that burn and it burned through but over time, I've been developing this strength, this inner strength that I can, get, I can let things land and I don't, have to, I don't have to like either shrink or go for the offensive. I can just let it land and move on. So how do you do that? 
here are some practical tips how to let things land in your relationship. First of all, remind yourself that you're in intimate relationships because you want to grow. Carl Whitaker says, whoever's not in an intimate relationship is emotionally handicapped because there's parts of you you will never be able to see and work on because you have blind spots. It's only in an intimate relationship where those blind spots appear and are very evident, obviously for the people that are not you. So remind yourself you're in these relationships to grow, to maximize the human experience of life, to enrich vitality. And then when it gets hot, when you're getting constructive feedback or when your partner's sharing their pain, open up your body, open up your palms, take a deep breath. And I always imagine like I'm taking it like a, I'm inhaling whatever their pain is or their feedback into me and I'm letting it burn, sizzle through my chest. If I need to close my eyes and I just let that burn kind of wash through me or that pain of shame or that wave of whatever that is of guilt. The defense mechanisms are going to run in your mind. Just let them run. You don't have to act them out. You don't have to be defensive or aggressive. You don't have to do the holy trinity of blocking. Don't be surprised. Don't be disappointed. Don't be insulted. Just let that in. After a few seconds, the burn will pass and you can smile and you can even say thank you for that or I need to think about that more or wow, I had no idea. Let me, let me, let me, let me reflect on that and I'll get back to you. You don't have to mentally apologize or or to express regret, you can just let that, just be with that for a second. If needed, tell your partner to time out. Tell him one second, let me just stay with what you said. You said something huge. I just don't want to, I don't want to gloss over it. And most chances are your, your partner's not used to you letting things land. So they might want to run ahead or be insulted. You just say, wait, I'm holding on to myself. Let me, let me just really let, let that in. And if you can do this over time, if you could be modeling this, so first of all, you're going to be raising the bar with you in your intimate relationship because your partner is going to realize that when you say something painful, they need to let it land. But more than that, you're modeling this for your kids and for your family and for your colleagues, how it is to be a mature human in a relationship that is open, that your heart is open, your mind is open, your body is open. So let it land so you can fly higher and raise differentiation. My name is Dr. Sal Romanelli, and this was The Potential State. I'll see you next time.